Hey guys, what's up? It's Pete the Parrot here, and recently Christo has had strep throat, but since I'm so good at copying his voice, I decided to step in and do the voiceovers for him. Needless to say, as of April 19th, 2018, Ryzen 2 has finally been released. The prices are out, and the value for the product lineup really is quite outstanding. I definitely wanted to make a build guide, and decided to target the higher end today and go with a $1400 budget. I think I found some good deals, and overall you can make a really good system for that money, even with the inflated GPU and RAM prices. And as usual, the PC part picker link will be down below, and without further ado, let's see today's build. The main star of the show is the processor, the $329 Ryzen 7 2700X. This is a beastly 8 core and 16 thread processor, and at the current time is the highest end Ryzen 2 chip available. It's clocked at a base of 3.7GHz on all cores, and is able to boost a single core up to 4.3GHz automatically. The chip is also unlocked, so manual overclocking is available. The CPU runs off the Zen Plus architecture by AMD, which is codenamed Pinnacle Ridge, and utilizes the 12nm process. The thing also has 16MB of L3 cache, 4MB of L2 cache, and as usual a small bit of L1 cache, totaling around 20MB of total cache. Finally, the processor has a pretty high TDP of 105 watts, but fear not, it comes with the Wraith Prism stock cooler, which is the most packed stock cooler I have ever seen. I mean seriously, even the fan it comes with has RGB. I chose the ASRock X470 Master SLI slash AC motherboard for a multitude of reasons. First off, it was one of the lesser expensive X470 boards released, being less than $150. ASRock's also been one of the go-to brands for me when it comes to finding a board with a good power delivery system and BIOS. As well as this, the board is a full micro ATX board with a black and silver color scheme. It has a small amount of lighting on the chipset heatsink, and that's really about it. It supports up to 64GB of RAM, which can clock up to 3,466MHz. Also, the fact that it has the X470 chipset means that you won't have to worry about it needing a BIOS update in order for it to accept your brand new shiny Ryzen 2 CPU. Finally, it has tons of other nice features like M.2 support, built-in AC Wi-Fi, Crossfire and SLI support, etc. For memory, I chose a 16GB kit of Team Dark, which costed $160. The kit was dual channel consisting of two 8GB sticks, which is very important for Ryzen if you want the best performance possible. It also runs at 3000MHz, which should perform very well with Ryzen compared to a similar kit running at something like 2133MHz. The timings on this kit are 16, 16, 16, 18, and this is running at 1.35 volts. Finally, it does have a pretty beefy heat spreader, so heat shouldn't be an issue, and the kit is definitely one of the best on the market considering the current DDR4 prices. For storage, I decided to go with two drives. The first drive is meant for booting up and putting a few commonly used applications on. As you probably guessed, it's an SSD, so these basic tasks will greatly appreciate the faster speed. Specifically, the Team L5 Lite SSD, which after viewing reviews, I noticed it seemed quite decent. It is a SAT SSD, so no NVMe, but for just $60, it's definitely worth the price for a 240GB boot drive. I also added a 1TB hard drive by Western Digital. WD is one of the best reputations for unfailing drives, and 1TB will be plenty for all your large games and other applications. This drive runs at 7200RPM, has 64MB of cache, and gets pretty good read and write speeds for a hard drive. For the graphics card, I went with a 1070 Ti. The GPU prices are finally starting to settle down a bit, but are still far overpriced, so this definitely was difficult. Needless to say, the model I chose was the EVGA for the win Ultra Silent Edition, and costs slightly above $550. Overall, the 1070 Ti is a great card, and even puts up a fight with the 1080 after it's been overclocked. The card is dual fan design, which is plenty enough, as well as having two 8-pin power connectors, so you shouldn't have any issues with high overclocking. Also, the card has a nice backplate, so you don't have to see some ugly PCB on the back that ruins your entire build's aesthetics. Finally, the card supports G-Sync as all modern NVIDIA cards do, and includes one DVI port, one HDMI port, and three display ports. For the case, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda cheaped out, but the value for this case is undoubtedly amazing. For $25, you can pick up a Cougar MX330. Now no, this case doesn't have all the tempered glass in the RGB, but what it does have, it has done correct. It has a fairly minimalist design with the front I.O. consisting of a power switch, a reset switch, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and audio jacks. Everywhere has dust filters including the top, the front, and the bottom with the PSU. Also the front is mesh, so airflow should not be an issue. On the inside there is a PSU shroud, and the case also has a decent looking plastic window. 
For the final part in the system, I chose the Seasonic Focus Plus Gold 550 Watt for the power supply. 550 watts is perfectly enough for the system, and the gold rating assures us that it will be very efficient. This unit is also fully modular and comes with all black cables, which account for good looking and easy cable management inside the build. Also, computer hardware engineers have rated the internals of this PSU as some of the best, so you won't need to worry about your computer blowing up while you're sleeping. Finally, the unit has some other cool features such as its hybrid mode switch and costs just $70. I hope you guys all enjoyed the build, and I hope you even learned a thing or two. As previously stated, I recommend all these parts to any new builder, especially if you're following a similar budget and are interested in a Ryzen 2 system. Before I end the video, I will give a shout out to my own Discord server. I'll help with any tech related issues, and overall my community has a great time. The link for that is down below. Also, I have set a goal of having around 500 members by the end of 2018, and we are already more than halfway there. If you enjoyed the video, remember to comment, like, and even consider subscribing. Without further ado, this is King Christo signing off, and peace out.